Hello, everyone. Welcome to lecture four on introductory statistics. In the last lecture, we talked about uh, histograms and the frequency polygon. Now, in today's lecture, we're going to introduce some other graphs. Okay, now let's consider section three on some other graphs. Now, uh, in this section, we are going to mainly focus on these three types of graphs. So the first one is going to be the bar graph. All right, and then the bar graph is for the nominal and ordinal variables. And the circle graph is our second graph we're, we're going to introduce. And then finally, it's a stem and a leaf display. Now, let's do the first one, bar graphs. So our discussion so far has been about um, um, the graphical display of interval or ratio level variables, like the histograms, frequency polygon, they are all, to, uh, they are all a graphical representation of the variables or the data that are at what? Interval level or ratio level. For instance, the weight, temperature, Right, they are along. They are altered along a scale, and the difference makes sense. So we have what the interval width. What is the interval width? Remember that for a, a frequency distribution table. So we have that what that is the difference between two successive uh, lower class limit. So the difference makes sense. So therefore, they are what the interval or ratio level data. Okay, now, now what if, if a variable is nominal or ordinal level, like um, the color, like the occupation, like the uh, uh, occupation rank and so on, right? So these are nominal or ordinal level. As we know, these type of data, they're, uh, they cannot take the difference. The difference does not make sense. So we cannot use a frequency distribution table or a histogram or frequency polygon. Right? Those cannot be used to draw such, uh, to draw graphs like such data. So here, now we are going to use the bar graphs. Now let's consider an example. Uh, suppose the campus newspaper polls students about their political preferences. Now asking them whether they are Republican, Democrat, independent, or declined to state. Now, of course, the political preference, it is a nominal variable, right? So this is a nominal variable. There is no natural order among the values of these political preferences. So, and uh, we can also have this frequency table. So these are the frequency table, right? So Republican, they have this many students who favor Republican party and uh, 510 and so on, right? So these are the frequency table here. And now for this one, we cannot use a histogram or a frequency polygon. Because what these values here are nominal. You cannot put them in order, right? So you, you do not have a, a lower class limit or upper class limit. You do not have a interval width and so on. Now, how can we use the graphical presentation of such a table? Okay, so here is what we introduce for bar graphs. Now consider the definition. What is a bar graph? Now a bar graph is a graphical display of a frequency distribution where frequencies are represented as separated vertical bars. All right, be careful. Here is separated vertical bars. Now consider this example here. Okay, so you can see we have a, sim a, a graph that is similar to histogram, but what? They are different. Now these bars, 
there are four bars. However, now in between bars, there is a space. There are spaces, right? There are spaces. Now they are separated vertical bars. They are not connected. Okay. Now everything else looks pretty similar to a histogram. As you can see, you have Y axis labeled with F, the X axis labeled with the variable uh, name, and also the structure looks pretty similar, right? Now, another thing you have to see is these levels of the variable or different values of the variable here, Republican, Democrat, independence, and declined, these are nominal. They, there is no natural order among them because there, this political party preference, this variable is a nominal level. So there is no particular order among them. So in other words, what? Note the order of the bars could be rearranged. Right? They can be rearranged because what the order doesn't matter. Okay, so this is a typical uh, characteristic of the bar graph, right? So, which is different from a frequency, uh, a histogram, okay? Now let's consider an example here. Suppose that the register at a Howard University reports these enrollments in each of the colleges. Now liberal arts, uh, 1324, Science and Mathematics, 1127, Performing Arts, 752, and Health Science, 1452, Business and Economics, 4320, and Education, 2431. A, what kind of graphical representation is appropriate for the frequency distribution at Howard University? B, create that graphical distribution. Now, for this one, A, what kind of graphical present is appropriate for this distribution? Uh, so far, we have learned a uh, histogram, frequency polygon, and uh, this one, right, the bar graph. So now we see that the variable here is colleges, which is at the nominal level. There is no natural order among these different colleges. Right, so therefore we know that the colleges is at nominal level. Therefore, we cannot use histogram or frequency polygon. So the only thing uh, graph we have learned here is the um, bar graph. Okay, so A here, a bar graph, uh, bar graphs, a bar graph. Okay, we can we are, we can use a bar graph. Now, why this is bar graph? Since this a college, this variable name college is at nominal level. Okay, so therefore we can use the bar graph. Okay, now B create this graphical distribution. So how to create this graphical distribution? So you can see that this is pretty similar to the um, histogram, right? So we have the axes and the vertical bars, but these vertical bars are separated. Okay, make sure that you, you remember that. Okay, now let's just draw the axis. Okay, so say that this is the horizontal axis and this is the vertical axis. Now for the vertical axis, we label with labeled as what F, which is represents the frequency. And for the horizontal, uh, horizontal one, it is what the variable name, which is the colleges. Colleges, okay. And then you want to add the ticks along the y-axis so that to what um, to 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 uh, measure the frequencies. 
So we see that from these um, uh, enrollments, uh, seems like a business and economics, the 4320 uh, is the largest uh, uh, frequency, right? It's the largest frequency among these, uh, fre uh, uh, these frequencies. So now we want to add these ticks, marks along the axis such that what? The largest value is included along the limit about the y axis. Okay, so here you have what? This is going to be uh, say that we can use what? 5,000, for instance. Okay, let's put 5,000 here. And then, all right, so that what? This is even the largest will be within the limit of our graph. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do that. And then say four, four, three, two, one. All right, four, three, two, one. So let's do that. This is 1,000. This is 2,000. This is 3,000. This is 4,000. Okay, and here is a zero, right? So we got these marks, okay? So that's going to be our y axis. And then for the x axis, we want to put similarly like these different college names. All right. So for this one, we are going to put the liberal arts. So let's let's put the uh, initials, all right? Like LA for liberal arts. And then science and mathematics, SM. And performing arts, PA. And the health and science, HS, and the business and economics, B and E. And then finally, education, let's say, uh, let's use ED. How about ED? Okay, let's say that. All right, so we got these um, different colleges uh, lined together. Now, remember that this order doesn't matter. Okay, you can put the liberal arts in the first place, or you can put the science or in the mathematics in the first place. It doesn't matter because it is a nominal level. All right, these colleges are at a nominal level. Now we're just using this uh, order in the uh, stated in the, in the question, all right? So uh, that is what we have. Now, we are going to add the bars, vertical bars of different heights with the height corresponds to the frequency, which is the enrollment here. So for liberal arts, we know that enrollment is 3024. It is a little bit over 3000. So let's just put it like this. And let's say that, okay? We just sketch it here. So we got this is liberal arts and science and mathematics. Then uh, once 1120, 1127, somewhere here. So. Now we want to draw um, uh, uh, another bar, vertical bar, but separated from the first. Right? You can see there is a space in between them, right? They are separated. And uh, we want to use um, the same width, right? Use the same width, okay? Now the next is the performing arts 752. That is uh, something here, all right. So let's say that it is somewhere here. So add another bar and then uh, health science, Okay, somewhere here maybe. Okay, so. Okay, and the BE. Okay, this one is the largest one. So yes, let's say approximately here. Okay. So you draw this one here. And finally, is uh, education, right? 2024-31. So somewhere here. Okay, so this is going to be what our bar graph, our bar graph. Okay, this is how we construct a bar graph. A bar graph is for a nominal or ordinal data. Okay, all right. So this is about this example. Now let's move on to the next, which is about circle graph. Right, which is about a circle graph. Now, what is a circle graph? Now, a circle graph is a common pictorial representation for proportion data, okay? So that is what the fraction or the percentage of some sample or population that 
possesses a certain characteristic or attribute. Okay, so possesses a characteristic or attribute. Okay, so for instance, the number of the, the uh, proportion of female students in a university, right? So that is gonna be uh, the proportion or the percentage that possess a certain characteristic or attribute. Okay, now let's consider the uh, following example. All right, Country Go Makeup is a line of facial products marketed to young women uh, ages 16 to 24. Okay, uh, also successful when introduced in 1980, in recent years, country go sales have eroded. An independent research firm was uh, commissioned to gather information about the ages of the current users. A nationwide random sample of 100 current users, that's the total number, right? The 100 uh, current users yielded the following frequency distribution table. So this is a frequency distribution table. And this, this is the first column are what? The class intervals, the age categories. And the second column is the frequency. So this is a frequency distribution table. Now, um, based on this frequency distribution table, we can find something interest, all right? So for instance, now um, uh, let's see, what if we want to find uh, uh, we might wish, all right, so um, uh, wish to represent the proportion of users who are, for instance, 35 or more years old. Okay, 35 or more years old. Now, how do we represent the proportion, right, of the users who are 35 or older? Now, we are going to do that using the following steps. All right, first, we count the number, how many are 35 or year old, and then we're gonna change that number to a percentage. All right, this is gonna be a second step, change it to a percentage, and then represent the percentage as a slice in a circle graph. Now consider the following three steps. Now we are talking about 35 or older, so it's gonna be what? It's gonna be uh, everything below this line, right? So that's a 35 to uh, 49 here. So 11 plus five plus one. So that's got uh, 17 of them. So 17, right? So uh, we got 17 uh, users who are 35 or older. And then we are going to use, change this one into a percentage, all right? Change that number into a percentage. How to do that? All right, so uh, using the formula here, so percentage equals the fraction, uh, the fraction times 100, okay? So what is the fraction of or the proportion of the users who are 35 or older? So that's the count, which is 17 here. So 17 out of 100 in total, right? So we have 100 users here. So therefore, that's the fraction we have, the proportion we have, 17 out of 100 or 35 or older. Now, in order to find the percentage, you multiply this fraction by 100. Okay, then you got the percentage. So 100 and 100 cancel out. So P is what? 17%, All right? P is a 17%, okay? P is a 17%, okay? Now, that is to say we got 17% of the users who are 35 or older. Now, this is going to be our second step. We change the number into a percentage. And finally, right, we are going to represent the percentage as a slice in a circle graph. Now, in doing so, we, there is one key we have to be careful is to find out the angle about this slice. 
Okay, so we want 17% of this circular graph. So what is going to be the angle of the slice, which accounts for 17% of the circle graph? All right, as we know, a circle has a 360 degrees. So we are wanting what? We are wanting 17% uh, of those. So that is to say we want 360 degree times what? Times 17%, 17%, okay? So this equals what? 360 degree times 0.17. Now 17% is 0.17, all right? So, and now you can use the calculator to find this value, which is 61.2 uh, degree, 61.2 uh, degree. So that is what we get, 61.2 uh, degree. And then you can use what? A protractor uh, to draw the angle. All right, to draw the angle. Now, for instance, it is right here, all right, showed in this slice, okay, here. So you can label that, all right, represent this 70%, and this is for 35 or more, all right, 35 or more. Okay, so basically that's how we draw the circle graph. Okay, you count it, change the number into a percentage, and then represent the percentage as a slice. Right here, the Q step is to figure, figure out the angle, right? the angle, the degree of the angle, right? So by multiplying the percentage by 360. Okay, so um, the circle graph is quite versatile. Right? In other words, they can be used to, for, to represent uh, multiple categories or multiple category at the same time, such as the percentage of users 35 or more, so which, which we just did 17%, right? So we just did that. And the percentage of users 25 to 34, this is gonna be another category and also the percentage of users 15 to 24. So that's multiple categories can be represented in a single circle graph. Okay, this would be represented as follows. Okay, so here is what we have here, our ages and so on. Okay, now the ages, uh, consider this table here. All right, this table will show, show us how to calculate, how to draw such a circle graph. All right, so now our first category, let's say that uh, 15 to 24, Okay, 1524, how many are there? Um, you count it, right? You want to count the number of users with, uh, who are 15 to 24. So from this table, 15 to 24, that's the first two classes. So 11 plus 24, that's 35. So we got 35, that's the total, that's the count. And this count, then we can get the fraction times 100%, which equals what? Uh, 35%, okay? So this is a ratio, okay? The fraction times 100%, okay? Times 100%, so which is 35%, okay? And then we're going to use what? This is 35% to find the equivalent degrees of the slice. Okay, so how to do that? It is what? Using 360 degree times what? 35%. Now you can find that it is 126.0 degree. And then you put it here. Okay. That is the equivalent degrees. That is the equivalent degrees. Now, similarly, we can do for the second category, 25 to 34. So you can find out that's the, uh, this is a group, all right? So 30 plus 18, right? 30 plus 18, so that's a 48. So we got 48 here. Now this is the fraction times 100%, which is a 48%, okay? Now then you got 172.8, 
degree. So that is, okay, 60 degree times 48% equals, uh, equals what? 172.8 degrees. 172.8 degrees, okay? And finally is the 35 plus, okay, which we just did. This is the count 17. This is the fraction times the percentage is 17%. And we, we already found out this one is 61.2. So this is 360 times what? 17%, which is 61.2 degrees. All right, so we got this. All right, so that's what we have for all these degrees, all right, the counts, the percentages, and the corresponding equivalent degrees. And then we can just use a protractor to draw the slices represented in a circle graph. For instance, you can measure this one, right? The first slice, 17%, like we just did, right? So this is 61.2 degrees and label it as what? 17% and this is, it is 35 plus, okay? And then the second, for instance, we can do this uh, 25 to 4, uh, 34. So that's uh, 172.8. Okay, so that's gonna be the second, this one, all right? So that's 172.8 degrees. Okay, so that is our second, uh, um, the second slice, all right, the larger one, right? So, and you can use a projector to uh, uh, draw this uh, um, slice, okay? And what's remaining is gonna be this 35%, all right, 35% and label them. And you got the circle graph. And you can see that this circle graph can represent multiple categories. Okay, all right, so that's how we draw a um, circle graph. Okay, consider this example. All right, out of 50 randomly selected country go users, uh, 12 possesses the attribute of red hair. Okay, they are with red hair. Now we want to draw a circle graph representing this sample proportion. Can you do that? Okay, so how to construct a circle graph uh, representing this sample proportion. Now, uh, let's do this one. Okay, solution. Okay, so now the count. Our count is already given, right? So we know that we're interested in this red hairs. So there are 12 of them. So uh, here, the first step say, this is my, our count. All right, there are 12 out of 52. Out of 50, so out of 50 users. Okay, this is going to be our count, okay? Now the second is to change the number into a percentage. So we want to get the percentage. So how to get the percentage? So that is to say we firstly find the fraction. So what is the fraction? That's 12 out of 50. So. 12 over 50. So that is the fraction. Now we want to change this one to percentage. So what do we do? Okay, so times 100%. Okay, so now what is this product? By uh, using the calculator, you can find out this is what? 24%. Uh, okay, 24%. Okay, so this is the percentage, and this is the percentage. So we convert this number into a percentage. Now, three, okay, to draw the slice. Now, one key uh, step is to determine the degree of the slice, right? The degree of the angle for the slice. So now the degree uh, equivalent, let's say that equivalent degree 
of the angle. Okay, equivalent degree of the angle. So that's gonna be what? That's gonna be 24%. Uh, okay, so we have in total, that's a 360 degree. You want to multiply by 24%. Now, which is what? 360 times 0.24. Okay, so what did you get? Okay, you can get this number as uh, 86.4 degree, right? So use your calculator, you can find this one, 84, 80. Um, okay, so 86.4 degrees using the calculator. Okay, and then after we got all this, right? Okay, we can draw the circle graph representing this sample proportion, right? So let's just draw this one here. Uh, we are sketching this one, right? So we are, we are just trying to sketch this one. So let's say that this is the center, okay? Now I want to draw a slice with the, with the degree is 60, 86.4, 86.4. Now you want to sketch it, but you want to have it uh, more, or less, um, uh, more or less accurate. Okay, you do not have to exactly the same because we do not have a protractor, but uh, um, but uh, you should be making it what? Making it uh, reasonable, okay? So 86.4. Now, this is pretty close to a right angle. So what is the degree of a right angle? That's what? That's 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees for a right angle. For right angle is 90 degrees. So here we have what? 86.4, which is a very, very close. So let's just draw one, but it's below 90, right? So it is still a, a acute, acute angle. Maybe something like this, okay? So let's say that this is gonna be 86.4 degree. And then we are going to label it, okay? Say that this is gonna be 24%. Uh, this is 24%, okay? And then what else? And you want to label this one. So let's say that this is red hair. That means what? 24% of the sample of the all the users of the 50 users are what? Ah, red hair, always red hair, of red hair, okay? So that is the proportion of the sample with some characteristic or some attribute. Here in this example, it is the red hair. Okay, 24% of them. Okay, so that's how we can draw a circle graph using these three steps. You count it, you find the percentage, and then you got the equivalent degree of the angle and the draw or sketch the slice from the circle graph. Okay. All right, so very good. Now let's talk about the next one, okay, which is called the stem and leaf display or all stem and leaf plot. Okay, so what is a stem and a leaf plot or stem leaf display? Okay, now here is the definition stem and leaf plots, it represents the quantitative data, must be numerical data, by separating each value into two parts, okay? So the stem and the leaf, the stem and the leaf, now, such as, all right, uh, the stem such as the leftmost digit, such as the rightmost digit and so on, right? So uh, it, it, you have to be uh, careful as we show in the examples uh, uh, below, you will see what do we mean by this, all right? So now it basically separate each value into two parts. One is called a stem, the other is called the leaf, okay? Now, um, suppose, let's consider this example and we are gonna show uh, what do we mean by this, okay? So suppose a random sample of small business owners were asked at what age they first became self-employed. Now, a tally of the results 
is presented below. Okay, so these are the ages we got for this tally of uh, results. Okay, so now, um, since the stem and the leaf is to separate each value into two parts. Now, for instance, uh, this 24 is one value here, right? We want to separate this 24, this value into two parts. So that's one is the stem, for instance, two as the stem and four as a leaf, okay? So we can do that, right? Two is the stem, which is the leftmost digit, four is the leaf, which is the rightmost digit. And then similarly 21, so you can put it as two here as a stem and one as a leaf, right? So 21 and similarly for 23 and so on. So at the end 41, so you can do what? Four as a stem and one as a leaf. Okay, so now here uh, the first two ages 24 and 21 could be represented as what? Since 24, 21, they share exactly the same stem. The third stem are both two, all right? So then these two ages could be represented as this one. So what are you, what is this notation? So they share the same stem, which is two. You have a bar and then what? One and four, and one and four. So one is the single digit is a leaf for 21, four is a leaf for 24, okay? And also we put them in an increasing order, right? One followed by four is increasing order. Okay, now using this pattern, we can put, all right, these values into the following graph. Okay, here you, uh, you realize that that's two twos, two threes, and a one four, right? So now these are chosen. You can break these uh, stems into two parts, right? With uh, the first row is including what, 20 to 24. Okay, for instance, this is like uh, 20 to 24. Now the second includes 25 to 29 and 30 to 34, or 35 to 39, and 41 to 44. That's not like the intervals of what? Of a uh, uh, frequency distribution table, okay? So, and then put all these uh, values into each stamps, into each row, right? So uh, accordingly. So for instance, I have this, uh, two, the first stem here too, I can have one, two, three, four. So that means what? I have a 21, uh, two one is 21. 21 is given here and also 22. Do we have a 22 here? Two, two, that's 22. So that's given here, 22. And you also tell me three. So 23 is given here and 24 is the first one, right? So now you can clearly see that I have 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, these are four ages. They have the same stem and they are all between 20 to 24. Now, similarly for the second row, you can see that I have two here. Again, this is a stem, but this is for the group from 25 to 29. So you have five, five, six, seven, seven, and so on, right? So 25, okay? Now we have another five here. So that means we have another 25, do we? And you can search that you do have another 25 given here. So 25, 25, and so on, right? It's 26, 27, 227s, 228s, 229, and so on, right? So you can, calc you can see from this pattern. And also another thing is you do see that these are in an increasing order, right? They are increasing, okay? They are in an increasing order, okay? So all the leaves, are in an 
increasing order. Sorry, I just draw this one here. Increasing or in an increasing order. Okay, so that's very good. So we got this one. Now, uh, some may ask, um, why we separate these ones into, for instance, why we separate in two twos or two threes? Or is there any rule we can follow in order to, uh, do, uh, to decide if we need to separate them into two rows instead of one rows? Now, here, okay, it really depends on you, okay? So it's like a, how many class intervals you want to have in your frequency distribution table. It's like that, okay? So of course, if you want to uh, have more uh, intervals, okay, have more intervals, it will give more detailed information about the distribution. If you have less intervals, you will have a less detailed information. Now, for instance, right? So you can have what? You can put this as a two, three, and four as the stamps, all right? And then you can put what? For the first row, you can put all these uh, values uh, with two in a single row, okay? For instance, I can put one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine. So now in, I can put all of them in one row. Okay, three, of course I can do that as well, right? So that's gonna be zero, one, one, two, two, three, four, five, seven. Okay, so that is three here. And the four here is gonna be just a one. It's gonna be just a one. Now you can do that, but however, it you can see that this is the first row, it is really, so it's 20 to what uh, here, okay? So it's 20 to 29. And the second row is 30 to 39. And the fourth row is 40 to 49. Now you can see that these are larger intervals, right? These are larger intervals compared with the one in this one, right? So if you can see that the left one with the shorter intervals, like these interval width is a five. Now these interval width is 10, right? With the shorter ones, it does give more detailed information. For instance, I will know how many of them are between 25 to 29, right? Easily tell here. So, but for this one, it is put all of them together, right? You have, you have to be count there, it's different. So uh, by comparison, you can see that um, uh, you, you know, the uh, shorter the interval is, the more detailed information you can get uh, visually, okay? Now, of course, uh, as for how to determine or uh, know what's, uh, you know, how many class intervals should we have? You know, it's really up to you, okay? So you're the one who, to, who are to decide how many intervals you want to include. But of course, you want to do that so that your audience can understand, right? Uh, you, you can convey important information to your audience using the, your choice of number of classes, okay? So you want to, if it is uh, something, um, uh, something important to show some detailed information, you want to have work. Uh, more uh, shorter, uh, narrower intervals, right? So more intervals there so that uh, it gives more detailed information. But if it doesn't matter much, uh, it, you know, if you just give a summary uh, representation, well, it's, it's not necessary to give more, more intervals, right? So like this. All right, so this is the stem and the leaf display. Okay, so you got stamps and you got what? The leaves for each stem, okay. Now here are some features about a stem and leaf display. 
Okay, so firstly, to show the shape of the distribution of the data. Okay, as you can see, you know, you see that this is a nice shape here, right? So it is tells the distribution, the shape of the distribution of the data. Now we can easily see a majority of the mode or the majority of them is in 20s, right? So 20 uh, and also 25 to 34. And this is age group, right? So 25 to age, uh, the middle two rows. Okay, so the shape of the distribution it shows the shape of the distribution, okay? And second is it retains the original data values, okay? It retains the original data values by drawing a stem and leaf plot. So why? As you can see, so you can realize that this is 21, this is 22, this is 23, and this is 24, right? And you have 30, well, and so on, right? So you can get every, single value from the stem and the leaf display. Okay, so which means what? Uh, you can put them at the stem and leaf play display and then you can retain all the original values. Now this is different from a histogram. I remember in histogram, so in histogram, uh, we really cannot, okay? So for instance, this one, right? So this is the, frequency distribution table here. And this is what the histogram we had before. Now, this is the histogram we had before, okay? Now, uh, as we can see from this histogram, for instance, okay? So this is a histogram we have, and this is the frequency. Now we can see that, for instance, the first interval, 130 to 139. Okay, so we know that the height here is two. Here's two. Now we know that two values are between what? 130 and 139. But do we know exactly what they are? It is once they are, what are the, they are between 130 to 139, but what are their values? We, do, we cannot tell it from this histogram. We only know that two are among or between this interval or in this interval, right? And similarly for 170 to 179. So I believe this is a three here. So we only know three values are between 170 to 179. Okay. But as for what exactly they are, we do not know, right? We only know they are in this range, but we do not know exactly what their value is. Now, this compared with what the um, uh, stem and the leaf plot, okay? So stem and the leaf plot here, so it is very different, right? So it is very different. Now, we can retain the original data values, okay? So as you can see, 21, 22, 23, 24. So we know exactly what those values are originally. Okay, so this is the one advantage of the stem and leaf plot over a histogram. Now, the next uh, is what the feature is, the sample is sorted. They are arranged in order, okay? So this is because what, as you can see, uh, the stems are in a, increasing order two, two, three, three, four, right? And also all the leaves are in an increasing order. So we will know that, uh, say this is 21, this is 22, this is 23, this is 24, 25, 25, and so on. And at the end, this is a 41, right? So you know that these are sorted. So we can easily tell, so what is the minimum value? Now, 21 is the minimum value because what? It is the first one. What is the maximum? A 41, right? So we can easily tell the maximum the minimum because what? The sample data are sorted. They are arranged in order, right? So this is usually pretty uh, decent, right? We can easily tell the maximum and minimum. 
And another, uh, you know, these are the features of a stem and leaf display. However, there are also limitations about this stem and leaf display. It's usually for small data set. Now for large data set, now this list can be very, very long, or this list can be very, for instance, hundreds of uh, values, uh, leaves, right? You just imagine that you have like 200 leaves here. Now that's going to be uh, not good, all right? Not good, okay? So that's going to be very, very long. All right, so let's consider this example. And we are going to show how to sketch the stem and the leaf display for this data set. Okay, now uh, the weight of a group of students are given below sketch the stem and the leaf display for this data set. How to do that? Okay, how to sketch the stem and the leaf display for this data set? Okay, so solution. Now, we are going to separate in several steps. Now, step one, we want to determine the stems, okay? Determine how to do that, all right? By finding the stems of what? The smallest value, say x mean, and uh, the maximum value, say x max. Okay, now let's, let's show how we do this, all right? Now for this data set, what is the uh, smallest value, x mean, minimum value? So I believe this is what, 144, all right? So now what is the maximum value? The maximum value, be careful, all right? I believe this is what, 197, okay? So we see that X mean is 144. Now we want to decide the stems for this minimum value. Now, what would you think is a good choice for the stem of X mean? As, uh, as one or 14, which one do you think? Okay, so for this one, 14 is a better choice. Okay, because now you really want to use a single digit as your leaf, right? because you want to put them in, in a sequence right, in, in this one order. So you want to use a single digit for the leaf. And uh, so for this one, you would put what? Okay, the stem as 14. This is the stem. And the four is the leaf, as a leaf, as a leaf, okay, as a leaf. Okay, so that's what we have for the minimum value. The stem is 14. Now, for the maximum value, it is 97. So here again, this 19 is the stem and seven is the lift. Okay, so now we determined the stems for the mean and also the maximum. So 14 and 19, okay? Then the stamps, all the stamps will be what? From 14 to 19, okay? Hence, the stamps are, okay? So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Okay, so this is our first step. Okay, now second step. Okay, second step is to put all these stems in a column. Put these stems in a column and uh, add a vertical 
far to the right of them. Okay, now for instance, I have what? Uh, 14, 15, uh, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Right? And, it's, uh, and add a vertical bar to the right of them. Okay, this is our second step. And then finally, what? Three, we are going to add uh, leaves to each stem, to each stem, okay? Now, let's add the uh, leaves. You know, be careful, you know, in, in increasing order, right? So increasing order. Increasing order, it should be increasing order, all right? So now let's do this. Now for this 14, we have, I believe this is only one of them, right? So this is gonna be four here. Now for 15, we have what? Uh, this one, this one, 57 and 59, right? So in an increasing order, that's gonna be zero, two, seven, nine. Okay, so increasing order, so zero, two, seven, and nine. Okay, that's, a, that's the uh, stand for 15. And then 16, so we will have, well, here's one, two, uh, four, four and three, right? One, two, three, four, four. Okay, so it's so one, two, three, four, four. Okay, now 17. 17 here is one, two, I believe this just a three and nine, right? It's just a three and nine. Okay, three, nine, 18, 18, zero, two, right, zero, two, so just a zero and two. For 19, that's just a seven, I believe, All right, seven. Okay, so this is the stem and leaf plot. Okay, so here's this, all the stems and these are the leaves. Okay, so this is our stem and leaf plot. Okay, now here, I uh, want to add a note here. So in case there is, there are no leaves for a given stem, all right? So uh, we still need to keep that stem but just leave the leaf, leaves part empty, all right? So we keep the stem and leave the leaf part empty. Leave the uh, leaf part empty. Now, uh, for instance, right? For instance, I, if I do not have, um, say that one, uh, these two are canceled out, these are crossed out. So I do not have 180 and 182. Now in this case, now the maximum value is still 197. Uh, so all the stems are still 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So these are all the stems we have, okay? so we still have the same stems, okay? Now, however, everything else is the same for the other stems, but for 18 here, since we crossed out 180 and 182, so you would have to leave the leave these, uh, what, empty. Just leave it empty. So which means what? There is no leaves for this stem 18. Okay, so basically that's how we can draw a stem and a leaf plot. Okay, so step one, we determine the stems by finding all the stems of the minimum value and the maximum value. 
okay? And then all the stems, at least all the stems from the smallest and the largest. And then you want to put the stems in a column and add a vertical line to the right of them. And the step three is add the leaves to each stem, right? In an increasing order, be careful. Now, then you got a stem and leaf display. Okay, so that's how we can draw a stem and leaf display. So that's uh, uh, all we are going to talk about in today's lecture. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.